Okay. Lord God the Father, just thank you for this time, Lord, and fellowship. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst, Lord God. May you yes. be exalted. Lord God, may my sins be put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. May what I speak is right. May I speak what is holy, because it's the Holy Bible, Lord God. Help us and guide us. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, that brother Ron's back. Amen. John 1. You're welcome. John 1. And we're back in John 1, but we'll be taking off again. And we're in John 1.11. 10. You told us last week we were going to start in 10. Oh, yeah. So, amazing what nine verses have done so far. We have gone from the earth being created and everything that's on it. We've gone from the heart. We've gone from man's condition. We've gone to actual soul-winning lessons and patience. And verse 10, he was in the world. Jesus walked and talked. God, the light, the word. He was here. He was in the world and the world was made by him. We've already discussed that. Verse 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word, and the word was God. Same as the beginning with God, all things were made by him. We've already looked at the creation. Jesus Christ, Creator, God, made the earth. He walked on this earth, and no one had any idea who He was. And there are people out there you will meet, well, if you just show me God. The nation of Israel began coming out of Egypt on the Passover night, and they met at Mount Sinai where they met God. The mountain quaked, it fired, it smoked, and God's audio voice spoke the Ten Commandments. They were oral. Mm -hmm. They heard. I have no idea what God's voice is. But if you were to ask Moses, mm -hmm. Moses would say, Moses could describe to you what that voice is. I never heard that. And yet, those people heard and were attentive to God's presence. And we read about 40 years of in the wilderness of just rebelling against God. Seeing God is not going to change your who you are, what you are. It's your heart. And, we've, and that's one of the things we looked at is our heart. Some people do not have that new, gener that new birth of the heart. So verse 10, And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. There are people who come up to you today. Oh, I know Jesus. And then they'll give you, if you ask them to explain, they'll give you this wild cat idea of who their Jesus is. You have no idea. I know Jesus. He suffered and died on that cross. Yeah, he was born a baby in a manger, but that baby grew up. Amen. And about 33 and a half years old, he suffered and died on that cross. He knew it from the day he was born. He knew what was going to happen. Now, Jesus out there, he'd go with the sin, he'd go with the flow, he'd go dancing, he'd have programs, he'd go face painting, all that. That's not the Bible, Jesus. They don't know who Jesus is. My Jesus is holy, my Jesus is loving, yet, my Jesus will cast you off in hell. He said, depart from me, ye that, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. He's not going to allow everybody in heaven, that would not be heaven. If God allowed everybody as they are, come as you are, be as you are, are welcome into heaven, we would not enjoy it. We'd be there for a month and we already start having battles. That's why the Bible says, not of works, least any man boasts. I'm not going to say, oh, I want more souls than you, or I had more ministries than you, I had more, more church attendance than you, I had a bigger acreage. No, we're not going to do that. It's all about Jesus. That's right. And when we're witnessing to people, we got to realize they may not have the right Jesus. Paul speaks about another Jesus. There's the Jehovah Witnesses do not believe Jesus is God, and that just completely defiles the Bible. That's the Mormons right. believe Jesus. I don't know what they. They came to Africa. They came to America, and they populate planets in outer space. I don't know where they get that in the scriptures. The Catholics believe Jesus, but his mother is all powerful. And I've been going through, like I said, I, um, I have other ministries I do on, on the YouTube and all that. I, I'm doing the hymns. And some of the hymns that are well sung in Bible-believing churches, the Virgin, capital V, that's not, she's not a God. 
she's a small V. It's Jesus Christ who is God, who suffered and died on that cross that I may have eternal life. That's the difference. He didn't smoke dope. He didn't have long hair to be a hippie. So that's the Jesus. He came unto his own. Now we got a problem. Well, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> because as we talk about Jesus, Jesus, you know how I keep saying Jesus? I, how many times do I say my name? So he came unto his own. So you're going to see in all kinds of places, all kinds of events, all kinds of situations, you're going to see pictures of Jesus. And you're going to say, well, first of all, there were no Polaroids back there. And it's interesting if artists and all that, God never hired an artist to paint his picture. He knows that. God said, now, okay, here's the portrait of my son. He didn't want to, he wanted you to believe by faith. So, okay, here's a picture of Jesus. So, what's the Bible say? He came unto his own, and his own received them not. The nutshell of the Gospel of John is, the fact is when we get to the last chapter of John, who rejected Jesus Christ? The Jews. That's right. He came unto his own, his own received them not. Crucify him, crucify him. With just that fact that we can go up, we can say, okay, let's avoid all this scripture. And we can just jump to the end of the book and say it was the Jews that said crucify him. He's Jewish, but we got to look at the Scriptures. Because there are churches out there now that are like, all right, you don't need to turn here, but I'm going to read it to you, or this is just the facility of the Scriptures without telling you where they are. Able to slip something in on you. So first of all, He came. He came. God came. Isn't it interesting? We call that the first advent. That's the baby in the manger. John 3.13. John 3.13. We're going to look at the first advent. And then eventually we're going to get unto Jesus being Jewish. Not American. You say, why that? Because that picture looks like he's American, not Jewish. Jewish are short, brown skin, crooked nose. Mm -hmm. And no marvel, I'm excuse me, no marvel. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So, we move from Jesus Creator. Now we're moving to Jesus God. At one point in time, before Bethlehem, Jesus was in heaven with the Father, the Father Himself. At a point of time, by a period of time of God's calendar, there was a time for Him to leave heaven. And the Holy Spirit would, would, would put into that womb of Mary the embryo of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was in that womb, He was not in heaven any longer. Though He's there. Remember, body, soul, and spirit. The body would be in Mary's womb. The body would be walking, talking, sleeping, eating, weeping. And yet still His spirit would be with the Father in heaven, but here He is. So, He came down. That's important. Because look at religions. And just, not going to kick them all, but just, were there ever, where their gods came down for our cause and not theirs? God saw a need in man, and guess what? He met that need. He came down. John 6, 38. Job said one time, he says, Lord God, do you have eyes like I have? Have you travailed like I travailed? And that, honestly, at that point, God would say, nope, sorry, Job, have not. The day, the moment that Jesus walked this earth, 
and talked on this earth and suffered and died on this earth. He could look at Job and say, yep, I now know. When we read John 11.35, Jesus wept. Do you realize that that is the shortest verse in the Bible, easy to learn, yet that's the first time God ever cried. He cried nowhere else recorded. And yet the Bible records that the first time God wept, he's, Jesus is God, I've got to keep saying that, and the first time that Jesus, God, shed a tear was because his friend was in the tomb, dead. And his sisters were crying. And the Jews were there, boo-hooing and crying. And at that moment, he groaned in the spirit. And you know what he said? I have seen Abraham die. I have seen David die. I watched Abel get killed. I watched Adam. Listen, Adam and I, we talked in the garden. We, we had fellowship in the garden. I watched him die. But never did I feel them die. Imagine all the deaths that God had witnessed to John 11. And at that moment in the flesh, he began to cry because, you know what? Being human hurts. Mm. And what other God can say that? That's right. Mary's not a God, so you, you got to rule her out. Moroni, yeah. Bononi, whatever. That, 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 ain't, that ain't Bible. That's another Bible. Mm, that's Only right. God preserved one word. But here comes Jesus Christ. He came. He suffered. He fell asleep on a pillow in the back of a boat. And the disciples, Jesus, we're going to die. They're talking to God. <laughs> like God's going to die in that boat. They wake him up. They didn't let God sleep. He's tired. He's left. John 6, 38. Oh, we just can keep on going and going. For I, for I come down from heaven. Not to do my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. Jesus Christ left heaven. You know how wonderful heaven is? I'll tell you how wonderful heaven is. The Bible can't describe it. We're going to get a new body. Or the, the, the seraphim are there. Holy, holy, holy. They're, they're, I don't want to say there's not sin, but they're the angels that rebelled. There's Satan. There's Job 1 and 2. But heaven, think about it. How wonderful, how gracious... Heaven is, how beautiful. There's no curse in heaven. And Jesus stepped down, passed through the birth canal of a woman, and ended up where animals eat, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Because there was no room at the end of it. And at the worst time of the year, taxation. That's what was going on when Jesus was born. He left the holy throne of God the Father, and they couldn't even find a bed for him. They had to put him where animals ate. That's the trough. You fill it with hay, hay corn, barley. Corn and barley, isn't that the stuff that makes the bread? Didn't Jesus say, I'm the bread of life? Is it maybe a possibility, maybe with a water trough? And Jesus said, I'm the water of life? I left heaven. Here I am. For 33 and a half years, I'm going to live as a human, as God incarnate in the flesh. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to have pain. I'm going to cry. I'm going to see. I'm going to get rejected. They're going to put me on that cross. I love them. They're going to, listen, I'm going to Jerusalem. They're going to kill me. Oh, Lord God, who's the greatest? I'm tired of you guys. Those disciples. Listen, I've got to go to that cross. Peter, put that sword away. Give me that ear. <laughs> and the fact is that and the priest that Jesus set up God I'm speaking of Jesus God they're the ones that say hey we don't believe in you we're going to kill you let's set him up Jesus here's a woman caught in adultery what do you think who oh, should we give tax Jesus left the throne of God for this miserable wicked world oh Lord I can't see give me, give me sight and where's, you don't even read about those people anymore the whole nation crucified. Now, I don't know. I have no idea if a mosquito ever bit Jesus. I have no idea. And I heard that stupid joke. I'm not even going to quote it. Because it's stupid. But the blood of God, Acts 20, 28, flows through those veins. Now, I don't know. I would assume that Jesus would have 
the proper body functions such as we do, bathroom. I can't picture Mary having to change Jesus' diaper, but I would assume he did. I mean, he became 100% man, 100% God. Jesus, Amen. get over here. Because the Bible says he had to listen to him. He had to be in obedience to Mary and Joseph. He couldn't be our Savior if he was rebellious. That would have been against the law. They could bring him to the people and stone him. So, what we're looking at, Jesus came right now. I can't fathom to you what it was like in heaven for him to live and come down here. But think about you. What if you were in heaven right now? Say God called you home. Here you, you know you're there. There you are. And God said, that's it. you got to go back. And that's exactly what happened to Paul. Paul died and went to heaven. So you're going back. I think, and when you read that guy's testimony, I think he tried to get people to kill him or try to die so he can go back. I mean, he was stoned. He was dead. He gets back up and goes back to the same city where they stoned him. Like, I don't want to be down here. And you can imagine, absolutely no pain, no sorrow, no troubles, no nothing. And then you're born in a world of pain, sorrows, and troubles. And people using you and abusing you as they've done Jesus. And then you go, you, you suffer and die. People believe on you. They get saved. Amen. Glory to God. Then they thumb your, your no, their nose at you like, I'm not going to do what you tell me to do. I'm saved. I'm happy. So what? Oh, let's build a church and let's make it wild. Let's make it satanic. Let's just follow and spoil the name of Jesus who left the heavenly throne for us. Now we weren't put it on that aspect of what Jesus Christ did and what we do to Him. And then we glorify. We're going to go to heaven. We're going to glorify. We're going to get crowned. We're going to glorify. There we are. But what have we done for the glorification of Jesus who suffered and died? Who left that home and came down here. He was born naked and he died on that cross naked. God manifested in flesh. So, John 6.41 <laughs> Six forty one. And I don't try to stay in John six months because John six is messed up by religion. I don't know if we'll ever get to it. I mean we're still in chapter one, verse eleven. I, I, I forget how many weeks we've been doing. Alright, so John six forty one. Then the Jews murmured at him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. That is a mouthful. Matter of fact, I was able to use this passage with another man I, I'm, we're dealing with a scripture about something. Alright, so let's get the context of this one. I don't know how long this one's going to take, but, but John 6.51, same chapter. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread which I give is my flesh, and I will give for the life of the world. All right, verse 58, same chapter. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Okay, now here's the context. I don't know how far we're going to get, but we got other scriptures. So, Jesus feeds 5,000 with five barley loaves and two fish. And they're satisfied, they're happy. Twelve baskets are taken up. And Jesus goes about, and this is where the storm happens. He falls asleep. Oh, Jesus, save us. He comes back into the sign. They're like, give us a sign that you're God. How about... What were those two verses you have on? 58, 41. Mm -hmm. So, give us a sign. Was not feeding 5,000 with... Five pieces of five loaves of bread and two fish. Is that not a sign enough? And then they go up up their mouth and say, Well, God gave us manna, our fathers. And Jesus is like, oh, Okay, hold on. He said, God gave us the bread of heaven. Jesus says, Up, oh, stop. Got to correct your doctrine. You're misteaching, you're misapplying the scriptures. Let's. See, Jesus, when they taught wrong, got in their faces. Okay, let me correct. 
That manna was not the bread of heaven. It was bread. It was angels' food, Psalm says. But it was not the bread of heaven. It was bread. It fed you guys 40 years. But I am the bread of heaven. God did not feed you me. Now, you had physical bread in the wilderness. Physical bread. Put butter on it, cook it, whatever you needed to do. All kinds of ways to prepare that manna. There were so many ways of that manna, they got sick and tired of that manna. Jesus says, I am the bread of heaven. I've come down. This is God coming down. He says, if you feed on me. Now again, the Catholic Church says, oh, this is literal flesh and literal blood of Jesus. It's oh. absolutely not. It's spiritual. That's right. And yet, physically, Jesus came down. But let me ask you a question. In relation to eating the body, the, the, the body, the flesh of Jesus. Little. Hold your place in John 6. Luke chapter... This one just came to me. Luke chapter 2. Or is it 1? Luke 1. Yeah, Luke 1. And... Luke chapter 1. Verse number 30, so we get the context. 130. Keep your place in John 6. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? I have not had any relations with a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, Spirit, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest, God's Spirit, shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now let me ask you a question. At that point, I believe, is when Mary was conceived by God, by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was in the womb. Now, did Jesus come falling out of heaven bodily into that womb? Absolutely not. He came out of the Spirit, didn't he? He didn't come bodily. So when he says, I came down, yeah, he came down spiritually inside that womb to become physical. So when you take John chapter 6 and say, well, I'm going to literally eat the body of Jesus. He says, I'm the bread of heaven. That spiritual came into the now, if Mary had relations, marriage bed relations with a man, that would have been physical. I, I don't know how to be clean, but what a man gives a woman to, to be pregnant, is it not a physical thing? Yeah. Okay? When God impregnated Mary, and I hate to say it that way, there was no physical. It was spiritual that that egg if it wasn't even the egg, it may not even been the egg. It may be, okay, in your womb, Mary, there's Jesus. That's spiritual. And when Mary's womb now has Jesus, the embryo, and grew, that's when he left the throne. He left the throne, angels glorify him, the cherubim, and he goes, and he's in darkness. And growing, as a human would grow. It's not physical. He didn't come flying out of heaven into Mary's stomach. That's how you interpret John chapter 6. Because he will say, um, verse 63, it's a very important verse to know if a Catholic throws this verse, these verses at you. It is the spirit that quickeneth that makes it alive. It's the spirit that made Jesus. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you in the power of God, the highest, that holy thing. It's the spirit that quickens the flesh, a piece of bread, profiteth nothing. If you were to have skin of Jesus and eat it, it would do you nothing. See, the Catholics take it all. I'm trying to get away from it, but this is where we are, though. When Jesus left heaven to go into Mary's womb, it was spiritual. 
by God. And he became a thing. That's what the Bible says. But, again, the first advent. God came down. Jesus. Uh, 632. Back to 632. Of John 6, of John 632. Oh. So we're seeing Christ left the throne of God. And what a downfall to be in this miserable world. I mean, can you imagine that moment when he was born, actually? I mean, there was Mary, and you know, the whole family's around. They're fighting, can I hold him? It's my turn to hold him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Trying to sleep. And then in pops these shepherds. <laughs> Just got him to sleep. What do you got? Like, oh, the God, there he is. Shh. <laughs> Don't wake him. And then next word Joseph gets, the, 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 two years later, the government's going to try to kill him. you got to get out of here. That's Jesus leaving the throne. Coming down. Verily, very, John 6, 32, Very, very, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. That's Jesus. So there's a difference between the physical manna that you put in a frying pan. Then the, the bread of God, which is Jesus Christ, and you don't go munching on Him. Because if you were to munch on the flesh of Jesus, you had to be huge and fat. That was against the law, by the way. Because there would not be enough Jesus around. But the main purpose of John 6 is He's bread. He's the source of life. Man needs oxygen first. First thing to go in your life, oxygen, you're going to die, your brain will die. The next thing, all right, you can breathe. You can, you need bread to survive. You need food. If you fast, I think it's the longest fast has ever been, like 80 days, something like that, you will die if you don't eat food. If you go in a hospital and you're not eating, they will put it into you intravenously. And then you need water. You need water to survive. You dehydrate. I know that twice in my life that has happened to me. So you need air. God's a spirit. God's spirit came down. You need food, bread. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. <laughs> and you need water. Jesus says, I'm the water. Your essentials for living, eternal living, is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Now you can have Pop-Tarts and you can have soda. That'll give you life. Here we are. It won't give you eternal life. But you can have Jesus Christ spiritually, the new birth. Nicodemus said, well, how can I go back into my mother and get born again, Jesus? You lost the, the spirit. Let's see that, John chapter 3. Let's look at that conversation, John 3.3. 3. Because Nicodemus, like most religions, takes it physical. I can go back in my mother... For nine months I wanted to come out. I gotta go back. So John 3:3. 3, 3. We're looking at physical and spiritual. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's a must. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Spirit uh, physical. Physical. That'd be like, okay, I'm going to eat the literal body of Jesus. So here comes Jesus' body floating out of heaven into Mary. No, that did not happen. So let's look at the spiritual. And Jesus answered, very, very, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water, that's physical. What's that? Honey, my water broke. We've got to go to the hospital now. That's physical. That's physical. And of the spirit, there's the spirit. There's water that's physical, mother, pregnancy. Time to go to the hospital, and there's spirit, there's spiritual birth. Nothing physical happened to you when you were born again. God did not rip out your heart and put a new heart in it. You did not get a heart transplant. You did not become somebody, I mean, we are a new creature, but you did not become That's that right. new creature. Matter of fact, we don't become that new creature until we get called to heaven. Amen. 
So, spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. You got that. That's flesh. Pitch yourself. That's flesh. That hurts. Mm -hmm. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. You must have a physical birth to be born. Is that not improper to say? You cannot be unless your mother gives birth to you. You cannot be born again unless you've been given birth by a, by a woman. So you cannot say an embryo inside you is saved. It hasn't been born. I haven't heard that one yet, but now I just said somebody will come up with that. I heard a man say no. All right. In order to get that spiritual birth, you have to have the physical birth of your mother. And when you're born of your mother, it took you and a mother and a father, and you are of Adam's race. You are born into sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life is Jesus Christ our Lord. If you have only one physical birth, you will die and go to hell and burn forever in the lake of fire and burn forever. If you are born and you are born again, you get that spiritual birth that nothing physical happens to you. And you get that spiritual birth by God. You are made a new creature. You change, hopefully, supposedly, James and Romans says. And you get to be a child of God. And that physical change does not change until you rapture. When we get a new body, that's physical. That's not going to be now. And that's another thing. When you talk about salvation, people getting saved. There are people out there saying, well, if you believe on Jesus today, send me $10, God will give you good health. No, 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 no. You are still in this wicked, vile body that sins and breaks down. You have been only spiritually reborn. You have been spiritually reborn. The physical part comes later when we get to heaven. But Jesus Christ came down. He's the bread, the source of life. Man shall not live by, by bread alone, but by every word of God. Let's, let's look at that one, uh, Matthew 4. Matthew 4. Matthew, where did he contend with the devil? Is it Matthew 4. Matthew 4, yeah, I thought so. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong book. Matthew 4, verse 4, 4, 4. Okay. Now I'm going to take you back to a place we've been met, met the both friends. I don't know what's the word, but I just made it up. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall we dare go back to John 1 1. John 1 1. John 1.1, 1, 1, been here for multiple times. In the beginning was the Word. John, Matthew 4.4. 4. We're to feast on the Lord, but that doesn't mean taking a fork and knife and eating Jesus. The Bible says the Word. When you read and study the Word, the Bible the Bible's called milk. Sincere milk of the Word. The Bible's called bread. We just read that in Matthew 4. We're to dine. There were showbread laid out in the holy place. They were laid out six and six, twelve loaves, sixty-six books in your Bible. We are to feast. That doesn't mean start eating. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. Your diet as a Christian, your spiritual birth, your diet of growth is this word. And when you got Christians who have not grown, you got Christians who are immature, Christians who are living worldly, they are not studying and reading their Bible. Or they're not reading all of it. Right. Or they got the wrong Bible. As a Christian, you have a diet, okay? I don't eat breakfast. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a snack. A diet. At least. At least three chapters a day will get you through the Bible in one year. People say, and this is nothing wrong, but today is the... 26. Proverbs 26. Tomorrow, Proverbs 27. 
There's nothing wrong with that. I don't do it. Because I'm reading through my Bible to mark my Bible four different places. At the end of the year, I will finish the Bible four different times by studying, marking, and reading. But I have done that proverb. And it, it gets into you, and that's your diet. And then when you want to go out, and you want to witness to people, and you put this diet into your heart, and you'll be dealing with people, and I've had this happen countless times, and Tracy's told me she's had this happen to her. You'll be talking to somebody, and the Word of God comes out of your mouth, and you're like, I didn't know I knew that. Yeah, wow. Why? Because you've been dieting on the Word of God. That's spiritual. The Word of God. So we've seen Jesus now. Again, the Word of God came down from heaven. God's, God did Mary's womb like He did in Genesis 1. Let there be Jesus in that womb. Boom. There He was. Nothing physical. So you can't eat Jesus as He came down. He says, I am the bread of heaven that came down from the Father. It was spiritual. It was the Word as Genesis 1. So when you try to eat Jesus and all that, I know I'm going off on the rabbit trail, but that's what John 6 is uh, perverse by uh, religions. So, uh, Psalm 78, 24. Psalm 78, 24. And 78, 24. I wish, I know that's a bad word to use. I could really explain more of what happened to Jesus when he left heaven for this earth, but I can't. Now, I don't know what heaven smells like. Okay? I don't even know heaven has a smell. You ever walk into a hospital room for the very first time? Well, you got that smell. I don't know what it is. But it smells like this place is just too clean. I don't belong here. And you'll walk into people's houses like, woo hoo. Yep, you're Italian garlic. Whoa, man. I don't need to eat garlic. And you'll walk in. You'll walk in someone's car. Yep, you got one of them trees. Where is it? And then you walk in a brand new car. Oh, I wish you'd keep that. Your little toddler walks by. Woo hoo hoo! Get over here. You need to be changed. Now I don't know what heaven smells like. But if Jesus was born and put where animals ate, what does that place smell like? From the realm of glory to there's cow poop or some kind of animal poop over there. You know what I mean? It's the middle of the desert. It's a hot region. I don't think Mary and Joseph had right guards. They had sweating. The realm of glory. We can't even fathom what Jesus left to be here for us. And the Bible says many will go the broad way that leads to destruction, yet still he left the throne. He didn't have to. You know what? I don't understand why God did that. All the things that God could have done, but yet he had to sacrifice his holy blood for us. And he came onto his own, and we haven't got to that part yet on his own, and yet they rejected him. People, I've come to help you. i come to save you. Get out of here going to kill you. Give me some rocks. Really? Yet what did we do to Jesus, what did we do to Jesus before we got saved? What did we do after, after we're saved? Psalm 78, 24. And He rained down manna upon them to eat. Physical. And had given them of the corn of heaven. Alright, yeah. It came from heaven. There are three heavens in the Bible. From this cement ground to as far as the eagle can fly, that's the first heaven. As far as that eagle can fly to where God abound, where no one can go. NASA can never go there. That's the second heaven. That's the universe, stars, planets, all those things out there. And principalities and powers, which we'll get to one day. And then you've got the third heaven. There's no seven heavens. There's three of them. Third heaven is God's throne. 
If it rained manna, where would you think that heaven it came from? The second heaven. Where does rain come? It comes from the clouds. The clouds are in the first heaven. Unless they're higher than eagles. I don't know how I think eagles can fly higher than But yeah, okay, that that came from heaven, the manna. But that was physical manna. That is not God. When God came down, He came down spiritually into a womb. He is of the Father. So that manna. Okay, back to John 16. Mostly in John. John 16, verse 27. John 16, 27. Another thing, when we're brought into this world, I don't remember what the first thing my eyes ever registered to see. We, know, we all don't know. I mean, our eyes are open when we're born, and you know, we probably saw an operating room, the doctors and all that. But the first thing we find, you know, we, probably mom or dad, what were those eyes of God, Jesus? What was the first thing they focused on? You know? He's wrapped up in swallowing clothes, and there's Mary. There's Joseph. Maybe the shepherds. He was looking at angels. He was looking at... I want to... Besides seeing Jesus, I want to hear those cherubims. I want to see them. They got four faces. Many Christians got two. I want to hear them. Jesus left that. I can't. Even, I don't even know. We don't even know what that place, where there was no room at the end. We don't even know what that place looked like. We don't even know what it was. God did not tell us. But how miserable was that place? You think Satan would have given the baby Jesus a penthouse at the hotel Hilton? Absolutely not. So John 16, 27 and 28. For the Father Himself loveth you, because He has loved me. He and has believed, uh, has believed that I came from God. I came forth from the Father and then come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to my Father. Well, that's great hope for Jesus. But he was with his father. Bye, Father. Bye, Michael. Bye, Gabriel. And he said he knows all the names of the angels. I don't know if they had a celebration when Jesus left, but he's gone. Now, a reversal, complete opposite of the, par of the parable of the, uh, the prodigal son is that prodigal son left in sin. That's not Jesus. But when Jesus left the Father's throne, the Father sat there waiting for the Son to come. 20 more years. 18 more years. 10 more years. Oh man, look at that. And now imagine all the angels looking at Jesus and the views he's getting. And they're like, God, like Jonah, aren't you going to send fire down there? No. Aren't you going to... Look what they're doing to your son. He's laying out with the animals on the mountain. They won't give him a place to sleep. The birds of the air have nests. The foxes have holes. And the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. The angel's like, come on. God, fry him. Nope, I love him. I sent my only begotten son. Oh, the final day. Here we go. God, they're beating him. With glass and whips. Mm. Yes, yeah, okay. Turn to Isaiah 53. They're punching him. They're putting thorns on him. I know he's gonna be home a little bit. A little bit. Hold on. Just wait. Hold on. That moment when sin becomes upon Jesus, he's sinless. God says, "Okay, turn off the lights. Stop the celebration." My son has become sin, turned the back, and the skies went dark. Jesus yielded up the ghost and died, became sin, became that lamb. 
goes into goes into the heart of the earth, goes into hell, says, Hi guys, I'm the way. You wouldn't believe me. Poof, I got the keys of death and hell now. See you guys later. Should have bleed on me. I got a point with with the diamond thief. Where is that other thief? Ha! Ah, Should have bleed. Okay. Walk across the gulf. Mm -hmm. Roman, I mean Luke 16. Show up in Abraham's bosom. Hi guys, I'm the Redeemer. I'm the Messiah. Amen. I'm the one you've been waiting for. Let's go. Let's grab this old place. Let's get out of here. Mary? Don't touch me. I haven't said it to my father yet. Don't touch me. Okay. Boom. Father, here I am. Here's my blood. Here's your blood. Oh, son, it's so great to have you here. Oh, I missed you so much, son. i got to go back down for another 40 days. Really? I miss you. i got to go back down, Father. Scriptures. Okay. Go back down there. Okay. Upper room. There's 11. It's a ghost. It's not Jesus. You guys don't believe me? I told you this was going to happen. Oh, I don't believe you. And he spent 40 days with them teaching and, 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 and instructing them and, and guiding them for their, their journey they're going to have in Acts. Acts chapter 1. He's with the disciples. They're talking. Boom. He goes up to the Father. And there he is right now, seated, finally, again, at the right hand of the Father. Right hand of God right now. That's where he's seated. That's where he belongs. For 33 and a half years, he was on this miserable planet. He left the abode. He was sent by God because God loves him. And God loves us. In this miserable, wicked world, and you see what they've done to Jesus. Only one apostle, disciple, was at the cross when he died. One. Of twelve, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Now he's coming back, but for the church, he's not coming back. You say, "What are you talking about?" The Bible says, "They that are dead shall be caught up first; those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together." We're going to meet with one assembly in the clouds one day. All Bible believing Christians, all Christians, saved, no lost people. And then we're going to go from the clouds and we're going to meet Jesus in the air. He's not coming back to this filthy earth again. For us, the church. We meet Him in the clouds. We meet Him past the clouds. He's coming back. He's, he's going to leave His Father's throne with His bride this time. Father, I'm married. Got to go on my honeymoon. Be back. I'll be back at an end of a thousand years. Wow, that's a... And yet... He's going to have fellowship with God this time. When he comes back on that horseback, any of his enemies, you're dead, you're gone, right? Go. Bye. Get out of here. Goat nations, sheep nations. Goat nations, get out of here. We'll take a loan. Sheep nations, you took care of my people. When do we persecute? When do we help when you persecute? When do we visit you in jail? When, do, when you did it unto my brethren. We'll get to that later. You did it unto me. All right? He sets up his kingdom. The next time Jesus comes back and touches his feet on this earth, he'll be the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of the Jews. And they will receive him. This, those who won't receive him, you're out of here. That's the coming of Jesus Christ in a nutshell. And the question is, again, how wonderful and great is, God, is the glory of God in heaven? I can't describe that. Now the millennium is going to be great. No more curse, no more problems, no more. Because Jesus is here. For that first advent, really, seriously, God born a baby. You know what kind of diseases are in an animal's crib? It's not a place for a baby. No? DCF would be... You know, DCF would have been always after Joseph and Mary. He left them in Jerusalem when he's 12 years old. Yeah, but Where's were. Jesus? So, moving on to Isaiah 9 6. Isaiah 9 6. I can't explain to you on how well Jesus was until he came here. It's. But guess what? He's going to call me home to that place. I've been born in this miserable world. I spent my first many months in the incubator being a freeman. But I was never in heaven before besides what the Mormons teach. 
Mormons teach you're in heaven, you're come down born of a womb, and then you live your life like Jesus, and then you get a planet. That's that's the Mormons in a nutshell. They are a nut. Not the shell. Alright? I'm going to somewhere glorious being somewhere that's wicked and vile. I'm going somewhere where if I preach Jesus, there are going to be people that hate me, and they hated me Saturday. I'm going to a place where we all worship Jesus. Where we will all get a brand new body, we'll never suffer Amen. no more, never have any more problems. Every tear will be wiped away, and every sin will be correct. Everything we think and everything we do will be correct, and it will be all for Jesus Christ. But look what it took Jesus to get that. And when we got to start thinking about ourselves, we got to get back to what Jesus done. It's not what would Jesus do, it's what He had already done. Now, as far as the punishment that Jesus took for my sins, I'll tell you how I am on that part. You can put me in a dentist's chair and give me Novocaine that doesn't work and have them try to pull my teeth out. I will show you how not Christ-like I am. Oh. As I grabbed that doctor's face and <laughs> yanked that doctor's face, and I think I may have said a couple really? bad words. You? But Jesus did not and took it. Leaving heaven knowing that was going to happen. Amen. Yes, he did. He knew what day he was going to die. He knew what date he was going to die. He knew what time he was going to die. Now, if God were to say, okay, I'm just going to tell you one thing. You're going to get hit by a bus, and that's how you're going to die. It's going to be painful, by the way. You would avoid every road across and every road that you can. But Jesus steadfastly went to the cross. He was in God's throne. He was with God. He is God. He's an angel. Paul, too. And Isaiah, I just can't stop shutting up about it. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. That son, that child. That's God in Jesus Christ. That's God the flesh and God the spirit. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Great thing to look forward to. And his name shall be co Amen. called Capital W Wonderful. Capital C Counselor, the Mighty. Read that verse of Jehovah Witness and see what they do with it. I know. Okay. You don't believe that God is Jesus, right? Yeah. You do believe Jesus was born, right? Yeah. So a child unto was born, he called wonderful counselor, the mighty God. Alright, that's not done. The everlasting Father, capital L. Wait a minute, Jesus said, I came from the Father. We read that in John. Isaiah tells us the prophecy, he is the Father. So it's God giving himself through Jesus Christ that we may have each other. Imagine God born in a stable. Would you even think your God was born? Now the Romans and the, and the Greeks had all kinds of gods. And they made it with the women and all that. Uh, that's Genesis 5 or something like that. But there's God. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of His government and peace there shall be no end. Amen. Upon the throne of David, that's what they told Mary, and upon the kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment, with justice, Henceforth, forever, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform the zeal. It was the zeal of God, it was the zeal of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm leaving the throne, going down onto my brethren, but they won't receive me. I know they won't. Onto Gentiles, I know many will go the broad way, but I'm leaving. You imagine if you were going to take a trip and you knew that trip was completely going to be unworthwhile, unfulfilling, and it's going to be miserable, it's going to be terrible, you would call up the airline and say, I canceled my tickets and refund me my money. Hey, Christ, I'm going. I'm going. And then John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten. We read that. And people will quote that verse at us because we've quoted it for four years. They know it. But they don't realize when God gave, 
What's that mean now? The sun left heaven. H. Heaven. Capital H. The glory born in a manger. That gives a whole new meaning to the first. I'm not going to say Christmas because it's not Christmas. That gives a whole new meaning to the first advent. When the son was separated from the father. Being a man. So Matthew 1.18. Matthew 1.18. Three more verses. Matthew 1.18. Matthew 1.18. Picked it up for a dollar or something. I don't bring my other Bibles. I can't read it. That's when they notes in it. Matthew 1.18. Here we go. This is, I'm going to read to you, it's not the Christmas. This is the first Advent. This is God stepping down from heaven for our sins. God humbling Himself that we might be saved. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When His mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, there was no relations between them. That came afterwards. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost spiritual, not physical. I mean, as far as that in pregnancy. He was physical. The Bible says that holy thing. But what happened between Mary and God was spiritual. There was no physicalness. That's right. Though some people will teach that. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Uh-huh, you're pregnant. Who have you been with? That's what he's thinking. That's right. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord... That's Jesus in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord. Jesus, in the womb of Mary, shows up to Joseph. Hi, how you doing? God is such a character. He is so wonderful. So, appearing unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. That's the throne. That's the rights. Fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. Don't call wife before they even come together. They've been agreed. No certificate, there's no ceremony. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She's pregnant by the Holy Ghost, Joseph. No other man, relax. Been faithful. Been no physical thing with her. It's all been spiritual. And she shall bring forth a son. We read that in Isaiah 96. A son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jehovah saves. For he shall save his people. He came on his own, but his own received him not. There's the many. He came to save all the Jews of all the world, but many did not. His people, no, it's his people. Jews, no Gentiles. Don't go run into Matthew for church age doctrine. Your father. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord by the prophet, saying, this is Isaiah. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Impossible. But nothing possible with God. And shall bring forth a son. Isaiah. That's what we read in Isaiah. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. That's Jewish. That's the one in the hymns. But that's a Jewish designation. God with us. Which is being interpreted, God is with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had been in him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. Joseph knew Mary after Jesus was born and had other sons. That's that No, After Jesus was born, they had relations and they had children. And he called his name Jesus. That's the first advent. That's not Christmas. Now, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. I read part of this. 
And people say, well, we read this on Christmas. There's no Christmas in the Bible. 26. And we're going to read the whole thing. We read part. This is the first advent of Jesus coming down. This is what we're reading. Get in your mindset. Instead of saying Christmas, first advent. That's proper. We do not celebrate Mary Christ Mass. Break it up into the syllables. Is that what they taught us in school? Break it down syllable. Mary Christ Mass. We don't celebrate that. We celebrate the first advent. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth the, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. That's good. With us. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, saying, I saw this man, and he had wings, and he floated, and he came with my toes. Now, wait a minute. When she saw him, it's a he, it's a male, she was troubled at his saying, at his saying, what his words were. God is blessing you, Mary. God has his eyes on you, Mary. She's so humble like me. Who am I? And she hasn't even got the news yet. She's just the fact is that God knows who I am. We ought to have that relationship with God. God knows who I am. Yeah, only by Jesus Christ. By what Jesus Christ done. Not because of who I am. My name is the Lamb's Book of Life because of Jesus. An angel marveled. I mean, she marveled. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. It's a salutation. What should Hello, how you doing, Mary? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, hasn't happened yet, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. So both Mary and Joseph get to visit. Joseph gets up, gets shown by Jesus, the Lord, the angel of God, the angel of the Lord. Mary, Gabriel shows up. The only one that's named of the angels. Michael's an archangel. He's got a little more power somehow, some way. There's only two angels ever named in the Bible. That's, that's Michael and Gabriel. Lucifer is a cherub. But yet God has a name for him. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Now, David's not his father. God is. But the realm of Joseph being of David, grandfather. He shall reign over the house of Jacob, Israel, forever. In all his kingdom there shall be no end. We read that in Isaiah. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, and therefore thou but therefore also that holy thing, magic on a womb thing, holy thing, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The baby. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth shall she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was also called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. And Mary said, Behold, I am man of the Lord. Be unto me according to thy word. And he departed from her. So Mary arose those days and went to the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Now why did she go there? So no one could say, yep, so no one had any relations with her. Well, you had, no, listen, I was with my cousin Elizabeth that whole darn time. You asked my cousin, I was there. No man came on to me. That was the Holy Spirit. So back to finish, Luke 114, I mean, not Luke, John 114.
we'll get down to 114, but John 114. The first advent. You ever think about it? More than Christmas trees and gifts to other people, isn't it? It's the gift of God. You know, you think about growing up, you know, around Christmas, bring that up. You would wrap up a gift, you buy a gift for somebody, you would put it somewhere where no one would find it, a dark place, a closet, attic, something like that. And then you bring it out and you put it under the tree that has lights and tinsels and wonderful. You know Jesus Christ, the gift of God, is completely opposite of that. He came from a place that was full of light, that's wonderful and great, came down to a darkness of a world. And even the world didn't want to hide him. Shut him up. But he's the gift of God. Oh, but if you give me a material gift, I would love that more. What about the gift of God? Verse 14, John 1, 14, And the Word, capital W, was made flesh. There it is. The first advent. And dwelt among us. Lived, talked, slept, ate. And we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. So when we read, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, God, and the world knew Him not. He came. As far as we got. He came. That's the first advent. That's much better than the Christmas story. And by the way, the first advent, the shepherds came, not the wise men. They show up about two years later. We'll get into all that later. But Jesus Christ left heaven for an animal stuff. God manifested in the cross. And people reject him. So he came as a baby, as the Lamb of God was taken away to sin in the world. But he's coming back as a man, as a lion from the tribe of Judah. I guess that's why he was born in an animal stuff. Type of lamb, type of lion. Lord God, I hope I've done justice to a remarkable finished work that you've done. I hope I've never said anything wrong. And Lord, yeah, I can't even describe, I can't even dive in the words of where you are right now. And yet about 2,000 years ago, you are where you are now. And you left your Father's throne. To be inside of Mary. You were born into the sin cursed world. You had Satan against you. You had your own against you. And yet you marched your way to Calvary. And Lord, you saved my soul. And I thank you, Lord. I have not done enough. I have not done a tiniest, a smittenness of what I should for you, Lord. For Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah.